Are people hardwired to be optimists or pessimists? Anthony Carboni here for DNews, and a new study from Michigan State University says that there's a physical, biological difference in the brains of optimists and pessimists. The study grabbed 71 female participants and pre-screened them to see whether they were predisposed towards thinking the glass was half full or half empty. Then they hooked them all up to an fMRI and showed them pictures of potentially dangerous or negative situations, things like a woman being mugged at knife point. And then they were told not to worry because every picture had a positive outcome, like the woman escaping. And the subjects who showed a more negative of attitude in the beginning showed completely different brain activity than those who were positive. The pessimists showed what the team referred to as a backfiring effect. Not only could they not picture the positive outcome, but being asked to think positively actually increased their negative thoughts, almost like their brain was digging in its heels saying, nope, you cannot talk me out of this. I know how it ends. Elaine Fox, the director of the Effective Neuroscience Laboratory at the University of Essex, wrote a book a couple years ago called Rainy Brain, Sunny Brain, where she talked about the brain differences between optimists and pessimists. Pessimists tend to have weaker connections between their prefrontal cortex and their amygdala, meaning the part of the brain that's associated with cognitive activity doesn't talk as well to the part of the brain associated with fear and fight or flight instincts. They also have more activity in their right frontal cortex than their left. But are pessimists born that way or is this a case of neuroplasticity, negative life experiences training the brain to think negatively? A study from the University of British Columbia last year did find connections between pessimistic behavior and a particular gene, ADA2B. People without a particular variant of it are unfailingly more optimistic. So yeah, pessimism could be genetic. But why are we so pessimistic about about pessimism. Sure, optimism puts less stress on us, causes us to take more risks, but a healthy dose of fear and pessimism is probably what kept us alive early on as a species. Too much optimism can lead to recklessness. A 2011 study showed that optimistic brains can dig into misinformation just as readily as pessimists. So researchers asked people to estimate the likeliness of bad things happening to them. So being fired, getting a horrible disease, being cheated on by a spouse. And then they were told the actual odds of those things happening. If the odds were higher, they refused to change their estimates. No, says the optimistic brain, that is other people. That cannot happen to me. And you could see where that would lead to a lack of preparedness. But anyway, it's looking more and more like you were born with the outlook you have. If you're a pessimist, that means you get to blame your parents for your fear and misfortunes. If you're an optimist, you get to be glad you'll always wake up knowing things are gonna be okay. Is there a pragmatist gene? How do we turn that one on? Which one are you? Let me know down below or on Twitter. I'm at a Carboni. Oh, uh, by the way, today is my last day here at DNews and I just wanted to thank you guys for watching and commenting and being so amazing and uh, thank Discovery for giving me the opportunity to host and write such an amazing show and Trace and Lacey and the whole crew here for making this the best job I have ever had. I talk a bit about why I'm leaving and what I'm gonna be up to over on my personal channel, that's youtube.com slash acarboni. So head over there and say hi. Uh, optimists, please comment on that channel. Pessimists, hang until I find a new job and then share your thoughts, please. Thanks.